Hey friends, I hope you're having a great day. Today we're going to be doing a follow-up on a review I did last year for the best budget barefoot or minimalist shoes. A year ago I was trying to find like the best shoes for backpacking that would fit my needs. So I'm a flat foot, which I think is a cowboy insult, but pretty much I don't need inserts, I don't need special supports, I don't need extra cushion in my shoes, just the opposite. And it didn't matter what shoes I tried, what brand I tried, it was always blisters on top of blisters or that same pain that I was trying to find a solution for. Then I heard an episode of the first 40 miles podcast talking about barefoot shoes. And I shared the link for that episode in the description of my last review video. I'll leave it in the description again this time. But so they just described what barefoot shoes are and their benefits and you know what kind of backpacker they might benefit. And they also shared their favorite brand that they personally wear, Zero Shoes. Now I tried Zero Shoes. I also tried Vivo Barefoot, but they still were not what I was looking for or what I needed. There was some problems with the way they fit. I was still getting blisters. So those brands didn't work for me, but I still had a feeling that there was something to this barefoot shoes thing that might solve my problem. So I kept looking and eventually I found on Amazon these shoes, the A-Leader Barefoot Minimalist shoes. And best of all, unlike Vivo Barefoot or Zero Shoes, even the Merrill Vapor Glove Barefoot Shoe, it wasn't a hundred dollars. So they were budget friendly and they were everything I was looking for as far as the way they fit and comfort and just serving the purpose I needed them to serve when backpacking. So I've been wearing these shoes for a little bit over a year now. I bought them in the gray color and black as well. They've definitely taken some abuse over this last year or so. What I'd like to do with this review is follow up on a little bit of what I shared last time, as well as, you know, do I still think these are the best shoes? Have my opinions of them changed with long-term use? Details like that. But first, if you've never listened to the first 40 miles, go do that. It is just a fantastic podcast show. It has since ended, but in the same way that you watch reruns of like your favorite TV show, I still go back and re-listen to a bunch of the episodes from their show. It's just all around a great backpacking themed um, show. And so what they would do every episode was the Summit Gear Review. It was just this very organized and structured way to share their um, unbiased, unsponsored review or opinions about a piece of gear. And so out of appreciation for their show and also why reinvent the wheel, that's kind of the format we're going to go with to review these shoes today. So first up, structure. You can see this is a brand new pair I got. Mine, they've served me well, and I probably could have worn them a little bit longer, but um, Nora decided for me it was time to replace these. So uh, she's done me a little bit of a favor though. It kind of exposes the inner anatomy of the shoe, which I'll be referencing as we talk about the structure. But so I got a brand new pair, and you can see it's got this mesh webbed fabric on top and this rubber sole on the bottom with textured kind of grip. And that's supposed to be a slip resistant kind of texture they put on the shoes. You don't have to tie the laces on these. Instead, it's this bungee cord and this little clasp so you can tighten it down and then hold that in place. And there's also Velcro to kind of get this little extra bit of cord out of the way. Now, these do have an insert that looks like this, and it comes out easy. There's no adhesive holding it down inside the shoe. Like I mentioned earlier, I hate these things. They don't work for me, so I never use the inserts. And under the insert is just this foam, this stitched in foam. And when we talk about maintenance, we'll get into some of the problems that I had with this but overall very flexible, very simple shoe design. 
I see this on all of the pictures for like barefoot shoes is that it's flexible if you can roll it up. So I'm showing you now I can roll it up. Therefore it's flexible. There's a wide toe box on these. So if you've got that problem where your toes rub up against each other or they just feel cramped in a standard trail runner or shoe, this will probably help with that problem. Oh, look, it's the shoe eater herself. Did you do this, Nora? <laughs> Stop! Stop it! <laughs> Utility. So it's a shoe. It's going to keep your foot safe from sharp rocks and roots. You need it to go hiking and backpacking. Because this is a more flexible shoe and less support, unlike a boot, it's not going to be like a heavy cast on your foot your foot is gonna move with it, it's gonna move with your foot. So if you're like me, you just want minimal footwear, something that gets the job done and keeps your foot safe from all the sharp pokey things on the trail, this'll do it. Now it's not waterproof. I've not really put much effort or hope into finding waterproof footwear. To me, getting your feet wet is just, it's a reality. of going outdoors. But while they are not waterproof or even water resistant, really, I appreciate that they're pretty fast drying. So when I get to camp, I'll take my shoes off, put them in a warm, sunny spot, and by the next morning, they're dry enough to put back on the next day, if not completely dry. So in my experience, they've been pretty fast drying and this mesh material really helps with that, you know, ventilation, especially from like sweat. For mass, both shoes together are 12 ounces. Um, so pretty lightweight. Don't know what else to say about that except, uh, yeah, 12 ounces. Now on to maintenance. This is actually my favorite part of the review because I'll share some of the changes and alterations I've made to this new pair. But first, um, just washing. When I get back from a trip, I toss them in the washing machine with the rest of my dirty clothes. And you can also just take them into the backyard and spray them with a hose and some dish liquid. Just don't put them in the dryer. Leave them, again, in a sunny place, well-ventilated area, let them dry out for a day or two. Now let's get into some of that wear and tear I experienced over this year and some of the changes that I've made with this new pair of shoes. So the sole and the fabric never fully separated on these shoes. I've seen with like the Merrill Vapor Glove, it'll split from each other completely. And it started to a little bit separate, but it never completely ripped through, like exposing the inside of the shoe. I did experience some flattening or grinding down of the texture on the sole. Um, and you can see it's just kind of in this area. I guess that's just the way that I walk because it's the same on this other pair as well. So that did wear down over time. Um, that's going to happen as you walk. You're literally striking it against an abrasive surface over and over and over for miles. Some other wear and tear I experienced with both pairs of shoes is separating of this kind of foam layer. Uh, and that's actually the sole, like that's all that's kind of separating it. It's just this little layer of foam. But so I mentioned taking out these inserts. Not only are they there as extra cushion for your foot, but they are an extra layer just between um, the bottom of the shoe here. And so by taking those out, um, I kind of accelerated, I guess, the the wear on this part of the shoe. And so as these tears would start to form, um, dirt and small rocks and sand would pile up uh, underneath in that layer, you know, of foam and sole and make just like these little dirt pockets uh, in the shoe, which made it kind of uncomfortable to wear after, you know, it hit that point. Now I've never had the shoelaces break or snap on me but I've have had somebody eat the shoelaces and they do sell replacement laces like this at most stores. They aren't as good as the original laces that come with these shoes, um, but they serve the same purpose. They have the same closure um, 
to kind of adjust and then hold the, the cord in place. So I've made a few small changes to the shoes just to try to extend the life of them. So the first thing I did to kind of help with that problem of the sole and the fabric separating is I went around the outside of the shoe with seam sealer. And I did that with these black shoes when I first got them. And it didn't completely eliminate the problem, it just delayed it. So I noticed the tearing away um, after longer use than my original pair of shoes. The next change I made to help with um, wearing away of the inside foam layer was I got these 99 cent insoles and they are completely flat. I went ahead and cut that to the shape with the wide toe box and made sure it matched up with the original insoles shape. And then I went in with a little bit of super glue on the inside and kind of secured it down. So we'll see if that helps to prevent that kind of tearing up on the inside of the shoe and helps me to get more um, use out of it. And then for that other problem of just the texture and the grip on the bottom wearing down, I don't know of anything I can do to help with that. It's just kind of a expected result of walking on rough terrain mile after mile. So that's just something that I uh, can't really do anything about to my knowledge. Now let's talk about the money saving part, investment. Unlike the popular barefoot shoe brands, Zero, Vivo, whatever, um, it's not gonna cost you $100. The price varies on Amazon for these shoes, but they range anywhere between $30 and $40. So sometimes I've gotten it for like $29.99 and then you know buying my other pair it's been closer to $40 so like $37 but it's never been above that $40 price point and that's kind of what drew me in about these is I was gonna try them and take them out on a backpacking trip and if it didn't work then at least I wasn't out a hundred dollars I've said several times already in this video I've tried Vivo I tried Zero and really those were so uncomfortable, I couldn't wear them outside of the house. And I'm kind of glad I did because I wasn't sure what the return policy was, you know, if they would even take them back after wearing them on the trail, if they didn't work. And so with this, you know, I wanted to just try barefoot shoes, get some actual miles on them. And after that 25 mile trip, I was sold. I was like, these are great you know, I can see myself purchasing this again. Lastly, trial. It's been a year long trial and they're still, in my opinion, the best barefoot shoe option if you're on a budget. And uh, I wear them every trip. There's only been once or twice when I haven't worn, you know, these A-liter shoes and I've worn the L-run shoes uh, that I mentioned in the last video just because these ones weren't clean. So these are my preferred go-to every hiking and backpacking adventure. I'm wearing these. And I'll even wear them at home sometimes if I need closed toed shoes, I'm doing something in the yard. So I wear them off the trail as well as on the trail. If you're wondering what size I wear, seven and a half for these. Now, that was with my old shoes. And that was without the insert. So now that I've made the small change of putting this uh, layer in the shoe, I've gone up to an eight, eight and a half. So with a liter, they have like six, six and a half, seven, seven and a half. But then for eight, there's no eight and eight and a half separate. It's one size and then you go to nine. So you do seven and a half, eight dash eight and a half, and then jump up to nine. So that is what my new pair is, is eight, eight and a half. It gives me a little extra room if I want to wear thicker socks because the seven and a half fits exactly, like fits like a glove. And if I don't have thinner wool socks, if I try and put on, you know, a thicker sock or any type of insert, my foot isn't gonna fit. It fits perfectly exactly 
with no insert and uh, a barely there sock. So I went up one size for a little bit of extra room and the ability to wear thicker socks in these cooler months. Now the very last thing I'll say before I let you go is these shoes take some getting used to. I said that last time, but I think it's really important to reiterate that when you wear minimal footwear like this, your feet aren't used to it. I'd gone from super cushiony trail runners um, and even hiking boots, which are just like a big clunky cast on the foot to this minimal footwear where it just kind of moves with your foot and there's not the same kind of support. It took getting used to. The first trip I wore these on, 25 mile loop, and my feet were killing me by the third day. But I toughed it out, I kept wearing them, those sleepy muscles in my feet started to get stronger and start working again, and my feet toughened up, I got used to it. And being able to feel, you know, a little rock or a little stick underneath the sole just didn't bother me anymore. I didn't notice it. But again, it's been a year of wearing them and getting used to them. I would not go back to boots or those bulky trail runners. I know calling trail runners bulky is like a joke, but in comparison, they are. So I would not go back to my old footwear. I really hope that you found this follow-up helpful. Again, I apologize if some of it was repetitive, but I just wanted to go a little bit more into the details of these shoes and also tell you about um, some changes I've made to them. Barrett's running in his sleep, it's so cute. Um, but I thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I can't wait to see you again next time. Tracing my footsteps through the wind